Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Borg Warner. Feel good about driving. Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. And by the 2013 Hyundai Sonata. Learn more at HyundaiSonata.com. Hello and welcome to AutoLine Daily. Wow, there sure is a lot of development going on in the world of electric cars. Some of it very exciting, some of it bad. So let's get the bad news out of the way first. Electric vehicles are not only selling poorly in the U.S., they're going nowhere in China. Despite very generous government subsidies, the China Association of Auto Manufacturers reports that EV sales are next to zero in Beijing and Chengchong. It blames poor sales on a lack of an infrastructure because there are not that many public charging stations, especially in cities. I would add that if China really goes heavy into EVs, its pollution problem is going to get a lot worse than it is today. Almost 70% of China's electricity comes from coal, and a couple of studies show that a high number of electric cars in China will cause a lot more pollution than the gasoline cars it has now. Okay, now let's get to the good news involving electric cars. Nissan announced it will return to the 24 Hours of Le Mans next year, but it will not be with the Delta Wing. Instead, Nissan's going to field a new design that will feature electric technology. It's not releasing any more information at this point, except to say they will be back in Garage 56, which is reserved for race cars pioneering the use of new technology. Nissan says it will share the telemetry from the car with the ACO and FIA sanctioning bodies so they can evaluate this breakthrough technology, whatever it is. They're promising more details in the near future, and I for one cannot wait to see what it involves. Speaking of interesting developments with electric technology in the racing world, there's a new racing series starting up called Formula E, which is for electric racing cars. With FIA sanctioning, Formula E is scheduled to launch in 2014 with Rome, Italy as the site of the first race. McLaren is going to design and build the powertrain while Dallara will build the cars. The goal is to have 10 races, all in major cities, with 10 teams and 20 drivers. Now they just have to line up major sponsors and big name drivers, but so far it looks like Formula E is starting to attract some serious partners for its effort. While Danica and the crash in the Nationwide Series dominated the headlines at Daytona last weekend, there was another piece of news at the race. The United States Postal Service, along with Richard and Kyle Petty, introduced new stamps that feature five classic muscle cars. The limited edition set includes the 1966 Pontiac GTO, the 1967 Shelby GT500, the 69 Dodge Charger Daytona, the 1970 Plymouth Hemi Cuda, and the 1970 Chevelle SS. The artwork was done by Tom Fritz, who my After Hours cohort, Peter DeLorenzo says, is one of the preeminent artists working in automotive fine art today. And you know, they make me want to go out and mail a letter. George Costanza once said, I would drape myself in velvet if it were socially acceptable. Well, I think we might have just found the car of his dreams. This is obviously a Fisker Karma, but that's not paint on the exterior. It's the next generation of car wrapping, velvet. And no worries, the material can be washed with regular soap and water. If you'd like to try and wrap your car yourself, you can buy different lengths of rolls in 15 different colors. Or the company that sells this wrapping, Velvet Cars, can point you in the direction of the nearest certified applicator. Kind of cool looking, if you ask me. But who's asking me? Coming up next, it's your turn to vent. We'll be back in just a jiffy. Proven on the track and on roads around the world. Borg Warner turbochargers improve fuel economy and reduce emissions without sacrificing performance. Borg Warner, official turbocharger supplier to the IZOD IndyCar Series. And now it's time for some of your feedback. 
Doug Teal liked our ranking of the top car companies, but points out, you didn't mention where Nissan Renault ranked in net profit. Dang, he's right. I did leave that out. Well, Nissan Renault is in fourth place globally behind the Hyundai Group and ahead of Ford. And thanks for pointing that out, Doug. XA351 GT weighs in to say, well, for two companies that say they're not worried about being number one in luxury sales, BMW and MB sure do a lot of hollering about what each other is doing trying to be number one. XA, they used to say they don't worry about who's number one. I think they care a lot these days because now their bonuses, their promotions, and their careers depend on keeping in front of the other guys. Erm Trevor takes issue with me saying that Mazda was the first automaker to put a solar panel on the roof of a car. John, come on, Mazda? No, it was the Toyota Prius that came out first with a solar panel on top of the roof of the car to keep the car not so hot inside in high temperatures. I don't know, Erm, go look it up. The 1992 Mazda 929 offered a solar panel as an option, and that was almost 20 years before Toyota did it. Rick liked our poll about what you would give up in your car, but he took issue with me saying that I could live without air conditioning. Johnny says, that's because you live in Michigan. Try giving up air conditioning in the South. I hear what you're saying, Rick, but it gets pretty hot and humid up here in the summertime too. Living without AC is uncomfortable, but living without heat, that's unbearable. I doesn't like apple pie is another viewer who does not trust autonomous technology. We can't teach cars to read, he says. With all of this autonomous technology going around, they might become sentient, then rise up against us, and then we'll have to go to war with them. Riding on horseback and bikes, we won't stand a chance as they run us over kamikaze style. We'll be doomed. I doesn't like pie. Thank you for making my day. I laughed out loud when I read your letter and laughing is good for the soul. You know, we truly do appreciate reading all your letters and comments, but we want to make sure that our comments section is fun for everyone. We do not welcome personal attacks or the berating of your fellow commenters. You know, that really means you're not very good at defending your own position. So have fun with the comment section or we will move to keep you out. Hey, before we go, we've got Pietro Gorlier, the head of Mopar, coming on after hours tomorrow night, and he's bringing the Mopar 13 in here with him, so don't miss it. But for now, I bid you adieu, and please join us again here tomorrow.